RenderWorks cameras have advanced capabilities that go beyond the adjustments we saw in an earlier chapter. These are called RenderWorks camera effects and we can access them by selecting a RenderWorks camera that's been placed in the file and then going to the object info palette and scrolling down to the bottom half where we can see the various camera effects controls. To make these camera effects work, we have to activate the camera first. We can do this in the Object Info Palette by clicking the Activate Camera button. And we can also do this in the Visualization Palette by selecting the Cameras tab and then clicking in the Cameras Activation column. We also need to make sure that the camera effects are enabled in either Custom RenderWorks or in the RenderWorks style that we're using. Now Final Quality RenderWorks has this enabled automatically, so if we render in Final Quality RenderWorks, that's already all set. Now there are four types of camera effects. The first is Depth of Field, which lets us focus the camera on an object in the scene and make everything else blurry and out of focus. Iris Shape controls the appearance of out of focus bright spots. Exposure, the third type of camera effect, lets us manipulate traditional manual camera controls such as shutter speed and film speed to adjust the brightness of the rendering. And then we have a collection of smaller effects directly equivalent to those of real world cameras and their lenses that can alter and sometimes even distort the appearance of an image. And these include bloom, vignetting, and chromatic aberration. Now probably the most important of the camera effects is depth of field. After we select the camera and activate it, we go to the object info palette, scroll down to RenderWorks camera effects, and click in the depth of field checkbox. Now this gives us access to four controls. The first one, f-stop, determines how much of the scene is sharp and in focus. A smaller number here will make a smaller portion of the scene look sharp and a larger number will increase the sharp area to include more parts of the image. When we point the camera toward an object, we can use a small f-stop number to make that object look sharp while making everything else look blurry. And if we want to make more objects look sharp, both in front and behind our selected object, we can select a bigger f-stop number to increase the depth of the field of sharpness within the scene. If we decide to isolate an object visually, making this object look sharp but everything else in front and behind it blurry, we have to make sure that the distance between the camera and the object we selected is accurate. Otherwise, we run the risk of making a wrong part of the scene sharp instead. And to do this, we select the Click to Set Focus Distance button and then click on our selected object. We can also measure the distance between the camera and the object and enter that information in the focus distance box. Now, if we've selected a very large f-stop number, like f22, then the accuracy of this measurement is not that important because the entire scene will most likely be sharp from front to back. But if we select a small f-stop number, like f1.0, then only a small portion of the scene will be sharp. So we need to make sure that the distance between the camera and the object is measured accurately to be sure that our selected object appears sharp and in focus. The iris shape control adds a little bit of realism to a scene when we have a very shallow depth of field, meaning when only a portion of the scene is sharp and the rest is blurry. When there are distant objects that are also very bright, such as light sources, the blurred shape of those objects can look like the iris in a camera lens. And there are different iris shapes possible. We can choose from a number of shapes, from round to square to triangular and other forms also. And keep in mind that the effect only works well with objects that are relatively far from the camera, so you might not see this with objects that are a lot closer. When we click on the exposure checkbox, we get access to the ISO film speed and shutter speed controls and we can adjust them manually to make the scene brighter or darker. If everything else remains equal, a bigger film speed number will make the scene brighter and so will a lower number for the shutter speed. So if we choose 1 20th of a second for the shutter speed, we will get a brighter image than if we choose 1 1,000th of a second. Finally, we come to the collection of smaller effects, 
and these generally simulate real-world distortions that can be found in film, in sensors, or in imperfect lenses. Bloom makes a kind of bright blurred halo around the brightest area of the scene. Vignetting intensity and vignetting offset let us darken the corners of an image while keeping the center part bright. Vignetting offset sets the distance from the bright area in the middle of the image to the part where the dark area begins near the edges, and vignetting intensity sets the darkness of the dark areas. Chromatic aberration reproduces a distortion that can be found in some real-world camera lenses when color fringes can be seen in the boundaries between dark and light parts of the scene and also in blurred out-of-focus areas. Again, we control the amount of chromatic aberration by entering the desired percentage. And this effect works best in combination with the depth of field camera effect. And when we render in a viewport with a sheet layer set to a very high resolution such as 400 dpi. Here's one thing to keep in mind. All of these RenderWorks camera effects can make a rendering look a lot more realistic. To take advantage of all these effects at a high level of quality, it's really best to render in viewports with the sheet layers set to a higher resolution. And this will get us excellent results, but it will also increase the rendering times quite a bit. So it can be better and more efficient to work out the camera effect settings using the render bitmap tool in a design layer, for example, or custom render work settings with the quality set to low, and then finish up with viewports in high resolution sheet layers.